hey, this is not how I'm meant to feel. I know how to get back to that space. I know how to get back into that calmness. You don't want to learn how to swim the day you fall in the pool or the day you fall in, in difficult waters. Yes. You need to learn how to swim every single day so that when difficulty comes, you know how to swim across. And the same is true for practicing peace. Like every day we need to practice being in a state of tranquility and stillness and calmness within us. And what it allows you to do is it creates this baseline within you. I call it your new default. Like most of us who yeah. don't have a spiritual practice, the default state is to be in the mind, always worrying, always thinking, always listening to the first thought that your mind says and... Believing it. Believing it. <laughs> Believing it, I saw this amazing um, post on social media that says, don't believe everything you think. Yep. And that's what we do. We live within the mind. So that's our default space to live within the mind. And when we begin to develop a daily practice, what we do is our, our default state now becomes this tranquility. So what you realize is that I know what peace within me feels like. I can switch it on, I can tap into it whenever I need to. So when the emotional wave rises, when you start to worry, you know, hey, this is not how I'm meant to feel. I know how to get back to that space. I know how to get back into that calmness. But that comes with practice. And I always say to people, you need to just find any practice. That means that you learn how to be still, how to be joyful and calm, regardless of what's going on outside. So that when difficulty comes, and, and that does happen with, with, with life, things, does, things do have a, have a habit of just happening that are beyond our expectation. But what we realize then is I don't have to always live with it in that emotion. And that doesn't mean that you're never going to feel stressed or you're never going to get angry. I mean, I have kids and I get stressed most mornings just trying to get them ready to go to drop them to school. Yeah, like, where are and, your socks? <laughs> Where's yeah, your shoe? Exactly. Where's your other shoe? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have to remind them to pack their bags and, and, and even though we might have told them 10 times, we take on the stress yes. of that. And so so you do go through those those emotional roller coasters. But what it means is, I think when you have a practice is that you don't stay on those highs and those lows, you come back to that kind of tranquil middle exactly. ground, exactly. which is something that you just learn how to go back to your default state. Yeah, I like that default state, like your home base. And yeah. so I could see like for me with those highs and lows, before having a practice, I'd stay low longer than I do now. And now there's, it's almost like there's always that awareness of peace in the background. So the highs and lows are coming in peace and that feels, it's a little bit more comforting, <laughs> you know, than just being up there at the top and then up, you know, down there at the bottom, but recognizing that it's coming and going. All of those and things I, are coming and going in peace. And I think what, what we need is one of the things that I, I'm, I'm a really strong advocate for is learning spiritual practices combined with the, with the wisdom, with the, with the well-being wisdom that comes with it. And I, I feel these days far too often everybody wants to learn yoga and mindfulness and they want to download an app and, and they want to learn some practices that very quickly just brings them back into this calm state but we also need to learn a little bit more about how does my mind work and you need to kind of in in, in doing that practice you almost need to have a bit more awareness of hey why did my mind do that let me yeah. let me not do that what, what was my mind doing that time so you start to become a little bit more familiar with that internal landscape you start to realize how to navigate through those highs and lows and so what's really useful is having a teacher a guide a wisdom that you can fall back on that actually tells you this is why the mind thinks like that this is why you ended up going low and our highs and our lows, we realize when we, when we read the spiritual wisdom, is it all comes down to attachments. Mm -hmm. There's something that we built an attachment to. There's something that we created an expectation that I need to have that or I need to hold on to that. And as soon as that attachment or that thing that we're holding on to is shaken or taken away from us, then all of a sudden we start to feel really low. And so it isn't just a question of, okay, I need to get back into my peace. It's about right that may be what i need right now but i also need to understand that i've built a bridge to something that wasn't going to last i've mm. built an attachment to something that i shouldn't have and it's about just learning to to enjoy life but not hold on to it 
mm. and just celebrate the things that you have and enjoy all of the pleasures that you have in your life and all the comforts that you have, but not to build this unrealistic expectation that this is going to last and all these things need to stay where they are in order for me to be happy. And it's not just about learning how to be peaceful. It's about learning how not to create those attachments in the first place. That's beautiful. And that only comes from wisdom. So tell me how that looks, you think, for folks um, across the board. I know that we all have our different traditions and our backgrounds, but is there something that you think um, would help that's more universal? Yeah, I think for me, when we look at the nature of suffering, when we look at why do we go down these, these lows, what the key word that sticks out for me is resistance mm. and one of the things that i've learned that's a universal truth with all human beings is we hold on to things and when they begin to go when things that we are in love with people that we love ideas opinions lifestyles that we fall in love with and we, we we're attached to when they begin to break when those bonds begin to break it's not the fact that things are going away that causes us harm. It's mm. the resistance that they, to, the, to that fact that they're going away. Yeah. We are resisting. In our mind, we're not flowing with life. We're not just allowing life to flow as it is. But there's a beautiful phrase that I, that I absolutely love to live by, which teaches us the power of acceptance and teaches us, reminds us how to be in acceptance. And the phrase is, if it comes, let it come. And if it goes, let it go. And I always tell my kids this, I've been teaching this to my kids ever since they were one or two years old. And I try and use little analogies, like I call it the Frozen Mantra, because one of the most famous movies, in uh, um, animated movies was Frozen, and the most favorite song is Let It Go. Yes. And actually that's a mantra. <laughs> yeah. That's a mantra to every moment, let it go. Not because we have a pessimistic way of looking at life, because everything in life has to go anyway. Yeah. Everything is going, we're just not letting it go. Mm. 